Hi, everyone. Hello. Good, good afternoon. You have um, some final prep to do? Or? No, I'm OK. Seems OK. Take it so away, Chef. My <laughs> name is Himanshu, and today I'm going to talk about a dish which is uh, called khichdi. Now, this dish means uh, a mixture of rice and lentil. Uh, and many other things, but it is uh, one dish which is prepared in every part of our country. Every household, every region makes this dish uh, with their own set of ingredients and recipe. And that's why we have these uh, 20 ingredients from different parts of India. Uh, these are pickles, spices, uh, some nuts, which are uh, uh, native to this region, and it's all going to be part of my recipe. Uh, when we talk about this dish khichdi, it's one of the most recognized uh, oldest dish from India in 1350. Uh, Ibn Battuta, the, the traveler who'd been to India and, and mentioned about this dish. So if there's any dish from India which uh, deserves to be the national dish of India, I think this is the one which ticks all the boxes. Yeah, so for this preparation, I have uh, uh, done some prepping. I have just boiled this rice and lentil. So this is the basmati rice, which is a broken one. And then we've got these moong beans, which are skinned, uh, and red beans as well. So just to uh, finish up the dish, we're just going to prepare a tempering for it. We mix it. It's a simple recipe, but there's an interesting story with the spices. Because when, you, when we serve this dish in our restaurant, uh, we, we put a uh, ladle of, uh, of this khichdi in the bowl, and then we put all these ingredients on top of uh, the rice and lentil. So when you have it, every bite would give you a different flavor. It will give you uh, an essence of you know, eating that dish from uh, that part of, uh, of India. Yeah? So you were saying this has been around since the 1500s? Yeah, before that. Wow. Yeah. So one of the oldest, or if not the oldest yeah, dish I think in India, because right? Indian cuisine is never documented, you know. But there are only very few dishes uh, which have these mentions in, uh, in, in the history, and this is definitely one of them. So I just to, it from just here. to show, amazing, uh, huh? we've just uh, boiled this uh, lentil and rice. It's a simple one. And then we're going to prepare a tempering, and then we put our ingredients on it. So for this one... We just start with the tempering. I would take some clarified butter. So the lentils and rice have been sitting in warm water for half an hour? Yeah, we soak it uh, in warm water for half an hour, and then we boil it. Usually when we do it at home, you know, even the way of cooking is very different from, uh, from region to region. Somebody use a pressure cooker to make it very f it's faster. Um, then you can also use the leftover rice and lentils from the last day, and you know, you just uh, make a porridge. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that would be sitting in your normal kitchen on the back of the stove, just bubbling away. Yeah, and it's, it, it takes a half an hour. That's it. Yeah. Right, so what's going in now? So we would start oh, with uh, the clarified butter. And then I've, we've got to crackle some cumin seeds. Yeah. Sorry, what was that again? Cumin, cumin seeds. Ah, cumin seeds. Yeah. So clarified butter, that's the standard fat content. In yeah, India, right? yeah, and yeah. that's something which is uh, gaining popularity in the rest of the world as uh, now that people, a lot of uh, chefs from the West, uh, mm -hmm. we call it ghee in India. Uh, and this is like very nutty and it's very flavorful. It's probably the most common base uh, of uh, fat to cook uh, our recipes. You've got a lot of supporters of butter around here, I'm sure. <laughs> so when we, when we crackle this cumin seed, I've got some basic spices, uh, which is standard in this recipe, some coriander powder. I've got some roasted cumin powder, which we would use it in the end. Then we've got this garam masala, which is usually a blend of about 15 spices, uh, and then a few onion tomatoes. A, few. a lot, huh? But this is just particular to this your is, area or this, this is standard when we okay. when we do this dish this is actually standard uh, spices which you put in this one and then the ones which i have put on the map of india are very regional centric ah, uh, so this in everyone yeah and then depending on where you are on yeah. the map and even you add those even bits. the medium of fat changes even the lentil changes so oh, this sure. is as i said is one dish which has no rules like you <laughs> do it the way you want to do it just no rules yeah <laughs> we like that I 
mean, that's the interesting thing about Indian cuisine too as well. I mean, it's such a huge country. People, yeah. When you say it's Indian food, yeah. it doesn't make sense no, to you, so, right? Yeah. It's like so saying for Chinese me, food. Indian food, every 100 kilometer when you travel in a country, uh, cuisine changes, language changes, ingredient changes. So it's very difficult, even in a, in a restaurant, when we do a tasting menu, we do a 13, 14 course tasting menu, and sometimes it's difficult to to do everything which represent India in, in these courses. So that's in why- In only 14 courses. Yeah, in 14, you do 26, 30 courses, it's still not going to be enough to yeah, showcase, sure. to tell what Indian food is all about. So even in a restaurant, we have this philosophy, every four months we change the menu, we change how the restaurant looks like, every menu, like the one menu which we are doing right now, it's called Spice Odyssey. So we talk about spices, the history, the blend of spices. You know, it's very easy to talk about spices. You know, everyone knows these spices, uh, even these spices. But it's an interesting thing what, what India should speak about with the spices is the blend of spices. For us, it's very convenient to blend 15 spices and, and make it right. Very that's, common. That's, too, the, that's the main thing, the ratio of it, how much you roast it. Uh, mm -hmm. Even uh, we are, uh, have a restaurant in Dubai and there's one thing which I'm very happy about being in Dubai than in India is the fact that the best spices in India are always exported. So I'm yeah, exposed to the best product from India outside of India than in India. Ah, so, so you're getting better stuff where you are yeah, now than yeah, in India. Yeah. Nice. So, no, it's still so cumin time. seeds? Yeah, we need it to be really hot to crackle. So I'm sure everyone here is familiar with the Indian food, right? You, you think about it as a comfort food, don't you? I mean, yeah, but that's the misconception. As I said, there is a very limited amount of dishes which are exposed uh, to the rest of the world from India. But there is so much to offer, so much to, uh, so much to talk about. And it's, I think, it's not the right conception uh, perception when you say it's just the comfort food. No, this is, uh, this is very technical. This is, uh, this is about spices. When we talk about spices, uh, we. There's a misconception again that Indian food is hot. It's Indian spicy. Food, yeah, yeah, it's spicy. It's never, yeah. it's never hot or spicy. It's, it's the personal preference. Uh, even in India, when we have food at home, uh, we, we eat the chilies on the side. We never put it in, in, the, in the dish. So eating spicy food is a personal preference. This is, India is not about hot food. No. Yeah, that's a really common misconception. So I've just put in some onion garlic and we crackle cumin seed. The smell of it is amazing. The cumin seed has already, uh, you know, been uh, roasted in this one. And then we put in some, some red onions. So cumin, garlic, and onion smells yeah. amazing already. <laughs> That's a worry. <laughs> and now we just throw in some tomatoes. So while you're doing that, Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Uh, so I've been, I'm from Delhi, uh, and I'm from the older part so of Delhi. Delhi's on the map. I didn't put anything from the Delhi's because Delhi is, <laughs> you get everything in Delhi. It's like uh -huh. one of the cities in India where it's a blend of uh, all our, uh, the, the people in Delhi is are never from Delhi. They are all being migrated from different parts of uh, country. Uh -huh. So. So you get everything. You get everything. Right. We put in a bit of salt for tomatoes to sweat. And you moved from Delhi to Dubai seven, eight years ago, is that right? Yeah, eight years ago. A bit of uh, turmeric. Some 
red chili powder. This is uh, coriander powder. So this is when all the colorful stuff goes in. Yeah, and a bit of garam masala. Yeah, and then we... So this way of doing the onion tomatoes with the spices is probably the base for most of the dishes in India. Like the home style, cook, uh, home style food in India uh, revolves around the basic spices, the coriander, cumin, and the garam masala, which is, again, uh, very different from household to household. Everyone makes it. Uh, sure, so it's not just city to city, it's house to house going down the street. They yeah, it's a like bit. every grandma would make uh, their own blend of spice, and it's all going to be uh, different and I mean, you walk through the streets in India, you see mountains of these colourful powders in the marketplaces. Yeah. That now I understand why, because they use it everywhere. So we just uh, let it cook for a while. So there's another thing which I would want to tell you about this dish. As I told you, everyone eats this dish in our country. Uh, people have khichdi in health and in sickness, uh, and it is one dish which is probably you would find it uh, in the poorest of the houses to the wealthiest of the houses. Uh -huh. So this dish literally has, uh, has no boundaries, and that's why we do this on this map of India. We pay tribute to this humble dish. Mm. Even when, you, uh, when we talk about uh, this dish, we also talk about... Uh, the religious places, uh, India is, 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 a, is a country which is very diverse with a lot of religions. At most of the religious places, you would have this dish, which is being uh, cooked uh, for people uh, who cannot afford to eat. Uh, so this is, a, I have a very deep connection with this dish, and I'm really proud of, of this dish. It's, it's not a rocket science, but uh, it's about probably the science of Ayurveda. I, would sh I should also talk about the Ayurveda is because uh, Ayurveda itself means uh, the science of life, and uh, and uh, this dish has uh, mentions uh, in in the Ayurveda. It is it is the one dish which uh, which uh, uh, balances out uh, the doshas, the energies which every individual human being has. Uh, these doshas uh, are in different uh, uh, proportions in every human being, and they say that this dish actually balances out all those doshas. So. These doshas are responsible for the mental, physical, and the psychological health of a human being. So, yeah, there's a bit of science, but it's, uh, it's an age-old uh, sure. dish which, uh, you know, uh, it detoxifies, it cleanses the entire system, so it has all these properties to it. So, as I was saying before, you moved to Dubai about eight years ago, seven years eight ago? Years, yeah, eight seven, years, yeah, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And then Trescent has been there for seven years. Trescent has been there for seven years, and then studio where uh, we have a small uh, chef's room. We do about 20 seats every night, and it's been existing from last three years. And st studio is the place where uh, we change the menu and uh, uh, we talk about all these uh, hidden flavors and sure, dishes. Sure, that's exciting for a chef, isn't it? Exposed. So Tresend is more traditional food, even though it is elevated. Yes. And then studio is where you get to play a bit. Yeah, and I would say that it's still Indian food. I would not like to call it modernist because I think it's, um, it's abused. It's over-abused, uh, the term modern. When you say modern, you, are, you have license to do everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I would say that it's Indian food, but it's Indian food through, through my eyes. It is uh, Indian food through the eyes of my team. This is how we perceive Indian food. For us, this is Indian food, and we never compromise on any flavors. But it's an, it's an interesting story. It's a story which everyone should know about this dish. Otherwise, this is you know, one dish you would never even find in, in a restaurant. I told you it's, it's easier to find it house to house, healthy, poor, rich, rich or sick. Uh, but you would never find this in the restaurant. Why not? Because uh, you need to have the emotions and the story attached to this dish to be able to explain uh, the guest that what it's all about. Yeah, because you, uh, the, the people who have this in home in India, yeah. they understand the story behind it. Yeah. It's, they grow up with it. It's their, it's yeah. their life yeah. food. It's their health food. Yeah. Going to the restaurant, which I've the been other, to, and I've had this dish The other there, thing it's... which is interesting about this dish as well, this is the first solid food which is given to the babies when they're six months old in India. You so, put the chili in there as well? No, because <laughs> you can, as I said, you can yeah. uh, 
pour it with, do it with basic spices as well. But this okay. is the first form of solid food also, which is being given to the baby. So yeah. th I think you, in every part of our life, this is, this is there. This dish has always been there. So now we put a bit of uh, this boiled lentils with rice. I mean, it's a really humble dish, isn't it? And it's actually looking a little bit like baby food. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it smells delicious. We're allowed to eat this afterwards, right? Is my mic on? So. I'm going to add a bit of uh, this fermented chili paste to it. Oh, this is me. Yes, yeah, that's me. <laughs> but yeah. it's, not, it's not spicy, but it has those umami flavors mm -hmm. uh, to it. And a bit of uh, roasted cumin powder. A bit of uh, garam masala. And we're still in the basic recipe here. <laughs> no. <laughs> now this is my recipe. No, okay, we started with you, all right. We just mix in a bit of uh, cream because we have to put a lot of ingredients in this one, so it has to just hold together. Just want to add a bit of uh, coriander, and this is butter. Nice. So you've touched everything here, haven't you? Yeah. And some more ghee. So this is a dish you serve in your restaurant now. Yeah. Like I was saying before, when we were there, we had this dish, and it's really interesting to get a, an understanding of the, where the spices come from, because as I was saying, in an Indian household, they, it just goes without saying. Everyone knows about the food. They grow up with it. But when someone's explaining it to you with this very helpful map of where the things come from, it, it gives you a real understanding of the, of the country, because it's so different going across and up and down. Yeah. Let it just simmer for a while. And then we can talk about the spices now. Yeah. So we've, we've, we could have done more ingredients to it, but then we've picked out the tastiest one. The, these are the ingredients which uh, makes a lot of difference in a recipe. Uh, usually, you know, there is no green apple in, in the khichdi, but it's more of the representation of the ingredients. And it also adds a nice bit of acidity in our dish. So some are picked uh, because we think it works with our recipe. But of course, it, uh, like this green apple, it's really famous from the Himachal Pradesh, the mountains. So, so we've got some saffron. Uh, we've got some uh, uh, blend of spice, which is uh, native to Punjab. Uh, we've got this uh, crushed poppadom, which is done with a bit of uh, a uh, bit of chili, then we've got the sweet mango pickle, we've got the raw mango pickle, we've got uh, a bit of dry pomegranate seeds, beaten and chickpeas. I've got the uh, bhujolakia, which is the ghost pepper. It is one of the hottest chilies in the world. Um, and if, if I don't I use it in my recipe. Taste that later, uh, <laughs> you'd have to just taste this with a toothpick. That's it. Yeah. And then we've got this uh, almonds, which are from Orissa. Uh, some curry leaves, uh, pink peppercorn from Kerala. We've got uh, the Madras uh, gunpowder from Tamil Nadu. We have also got this uh, uh, gongura pickle, which is uh, the Indian sorrel leaf pickle, uh, a blend of spices, which is usually used in making the biryani. We've got this uh, kasundi, which is uh, 
a paste of uh, fermented mustard from, uh, from Bengal. Uh, and then we've got this pickled ginger. We've got this uh, gram flour save, uh, which is a popular snack. Uh, we've got this uh, blend of spice again. This is usually used for the picklings in India. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So now we're going to add various amounts of this. Yeah. And so, for example, if you were coming from this area, you'd use these kind of spices from here. Yes. And like, if you were coming from even, down here, like, it'd be more even, these Even as kind. I said, the, the medium of fat changes. Usually when the khichdi or any preparation, mostly is when it's cooked in West Bengal, it's, uh, uh, it's done with the mustard oil. Right. Usually in the Haryana, it is done with the clarified butter because they make it at home. In Punjab, it's done with the butter. In South India, it's done with the coconut oil. Uh, even when they do this dish in the South India, they put curry leaves in it. They put a bit of pink pepper, or not the pink pepper, the black pepper. We use pink pepper, it's because it has a bit of sweetness to it. It's really nice. So yeah, this is, this is that. Yeah. So you even, can travel even, the country eating the same dish and it would never be the same. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the... Sounds like a cool yeah. tour. So, Unless you're from Delhi, in which case you use all of it. <laughs> now we just going to plate this one. And now we just quickly add everything to it. I'll repeat all the ingredients where it comes from. So we start from the Kashmir. We've got some saffron. A bit of saffron from Kashmir. Then I've got some green apples uh, from Himachal Pradesh. This is uh, the kadhai masala from Punjab. I've got this uh, crushed papadum, it's called papachuri from Rajasthan. Some sweet uh, mango pickle from Gujarat. Then we've got this uh, raw mango pickle from uh, Maharashtra. I've got some curry leaves from Karnataka. Then this uh, pink peppercorn from Kerala. Madras gunpowder from Tamil Nadu. This is a blend of uh, rice and lentil. It's eaten like this in the powdered form. I've got this uh, sorrel leaf pickle from Andhra Pradesh. This is the biryani spice from Telangana, Hyderabad. I've got some chutney made out of sesame seeds from Chhattisgarh. This is safe from Madhya Pradesh. Uh, pickled spice from Uttar Pradesh. We've got some almonds, Chironji, Kudapa almonds. It's from Orissa. This is uh, mustard from Bengal. Some beaten chickpea from Bihar. Uh, pickled ginger from Arunachal Pradesh. And then we've got this uh, dried pomegranate seeds. It's a bit sour. Uh, it's from the Uttar Pradesh. Yeah. yeah. So this is one recipe, as I said, which can uh, which can tell you what India is all about. Uh, it's a humble bowl of rice and lentil, but we've got so many flavors, so many uh, aroma coming out of this plate. So you can travel India in one plate, yeah. just moving around. And either you can just mix it all up and eat, or you can just have this with an individual ingredient to, to know uh, the difference it makes with every bite. Fantastic. Looks delicious. Yeah. So thank you so much. Let me know if you have uh, uh, any questions.
The lady with the blonde hair up there has a question, doesn't she? The one that told me to get up on stage <laughs> today. Thank you, gentlemen. And we also have some time left, so um, yeah. do not hesitate to ask I think we got the smell in <laughs> Definitely. Hi, Chef. Hello. Um, we did an interview with you, yeah. uh, yeswefood.com, and uh, you talked about satisfying, you know, taste palates. Yeah. And uh, with Indian food, it's much more than comfort food, and you elevated it. Yeah. But how is it for you? Because you actually managed to, you know, get that taste palate yeah. and keep making people come back. Yeah. How was it for you with the I, mindset of creating I your dishes? Yeah, I, I follow one principle, and it's very simple. I cook food, I do dishes, I use those ingredients which I like to eat. So I have no offense to anyone, but there are chefs who pick, pick up things which they cook with, eventually they don't even like. If I don't like something, how will I make it tasty? So that's the first principle. My menu can be, can be one directional, but for me, the flavor, the taste is very important. It's because then people believe in me. They come back every time I change the menu. So if I'm not satisfied with my food, if I'm not eating a bowl of my food, uh, then how will I uh, know that uh, the guest would enjoy my food? So I have to be absolutely sure that uh, it is good for my palate, and then I can tell my story that why, dish, why this dish is being made like this, why I use spices like this, is because I'm comfortable. I know this works perfect. And, and that's the story, yeah. You have, to, you have to serve food what you like to eat, not what is trending. Thank you.